Today, we're taking a look at two sensors for getting temperature and humidity data into your home automation system. Both are inexpensive, easy to use, battery powered, and use Zigbee. Hey guys, I'm Logan, and this is Home Automation Lab. Part of being a home automation nerd like me is getting as much data into your system as possible and using devices in novel ways to control your home. In this series of videos, I'll be looking at different devices and sensors that you can use to really elevate your home automation to new heights. If you have suggestions for devices I should review, comment below or send them to me. I'll include a link in the description. Today I'll be covering two temperature and humidity sensors that use Zigbee protocol to send data into your home automation system. Using these sensors, you can have a more holistic idea of the climate in your home to better control HVAC or even use the information for a particular room or area to trigger other devices or automations. These sensors use the Zigbee protocol. It was designed for Internet of Things or IoT devices to provide a low power way of sending and receiving data over a network. Wi-Fi uses a ton of power because it requires consistent connectivity to work and the area device can be in is limited to radio waves produced by a wireless router. Wi-Fi devices will always require you to plug in to a power source. Zigbee networks are meshed, so the devices themselves create a network instead of relying solely on the Zigbee hub. As long as the device has good connectivity to the hub or another device, any nearby devices can use it to connect to the hub. And Zigbee devices don't have to constantly maintain its connection to the network and only need the minimal power to send or receive data. It makes Zigbee ideal for battery powered devices like sensors. The two sensors I'll be showing you today are from AliExpress and many of the devices in this series will be too. Both are made primarily for the Tuya smart ecosystem and claim that the Tuya app and hub are required for setup. However, I had no problems integrating both devices into my Zigbee network. All the devices I mentioned here today will be in this video's description and the episode notes on my site. Before we dive into the sensors, I want to briefly talk about how I tested them. When testing these products, I want to do it as scientifically as possible so that I can provide you with an unbiased and data-backed analysis. For these sensors, I wanted to have a control for both temperature and humidity. Unfortunately, only the temperature data logger was available for my tests. I used this Elitech RC5 Plus data logger I bought on Amazon as the temperature control. It has a reported accuracy of plus or minus 0.9 degrees Fahrenheit or 0.5 degrees Celsius. It logs data at a consistent rate of two minutes. Both sensors and the control were placed in a row for the most accurate readings, they were left for about six days or 158 hours to collect data into Home Assistant. All of the raw data will be available in a Google Sheet linked in the description and episode notes. The first sensor is from Heozy. I bought it on AliExpress for $1.65, but it's currently listed for $4.08. In the listing, it reports a temperature accuracy of plus or minus 3 degrees Celsius or 5.4 degrees Fahrenheit and a humidity accuracy of plus or minus 3%. Its power source is a button battery, or CR2450, which is included. During my testing, I found the temperature data mirrored the control well within the reported accuracy, with a median difference of, point, of negative 0.7 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 1.25 degrees Celsius. As with most Zigbee sensors, data is only recorded when a change is detected. Over the testing period, the Heo Z sensor recorded 576 temperature changes to Home Assistant, with updates being recorded about every 10 minutes. I didn't have a control for humidity, but the sensor recorded 1,164 changes to humidity over the testing period, with most updates being recorded about every three minutes. The other sensor is from Lefsitsu. I bought it for $3.47 on AliExpress, and it's currently listed for $2.85. In the listing, it reports a temperature accuracy of plus or minus 1 degree Celsius or 1.8 degrees Fahrenheit and a humidity accuracy of plus or minus 5%. The power source is an LR03 1.5 volt battery that was included. The Lefsitsu sensor 
mirrored the control decently well, but was outside of the reported accuracy. It had a median difference of negative one degrees Fahrenheit or negative 1.8 degrees Celsius. The sensor recorded 293 temperature updates to Home Assistant with most updates being reported every half hour and for humidity, it recorded 77 updates with most updates being recorded every hour and a half. One odd note, this sensor didn't report its battery life to Home Assistant. I'm not sure if it was a fluke in the device itself or maybe my setup or if maybe it's just not something that it reports to Home Assistant through the Zigbee network. Both sensors gave fairly accurate temperature readings and similar humidity readings were low priced and in general worked as advertised. The Heozi sensor recorded a lot more data than the left set Sue, almost double the number of temperature readings and more than 10 times the humidity readings. For situations where you need as close to real time data as possible, the Heozi sensor gets my vote. And between these two sensors, my recommendation would be to go with the KOZ sensor. It provides finer and more accurate data, looks aesthetically pleasing, so it would be spouse and family approved. And that's always an important part of home automation. So in true ADHD fashion, I uh, procrastinated and it is now a couple of weeks later but I'm going to show you a couple of ways we can use the temperature and humidity sensors in our home automation systems. In particular with mine, it's Home Assistant. Uh, so the first one that we're going to do is going to do like better whole home um, climate control using the sensors. Um, because for some reason, a lot of like thermostats are placed in very bad locations. Like mine now is at the garage door where if you open it, it's going to drop the temperature or raise the temperature based on what the um, temperature in the garage is. Uh, so this is going to average out the sensors that you do have and going to then take those sensors and adjust your uh, HVAC thermostat accordingly. So first thing we're going to do is create a helper in home assistant that's going to so we're going to go into our settings, into devices and services, click on helpers, and then we are going to create a helper. And then we're going to, let's see, combine state of several sensors. We're just going to call this median temperature. Okay, and then we'll do the left six two. And then we'll do, uh, we'll select median. And we'll do the precision of zero so that it automatically rounds to the next whole number. All right, so we can see this here. Right now, the median temperature in my house is 72 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a little high for me because I like it cold. So now that we have the, the median temperature sensor available, we're now going to work on an automation that's going to do this. I'm going to do it in a very simplistic, probably not greatest way of doing it. And there's probably several different ways that you could do this. But I'm doing this just to give you the example. Comment down below if you want to see more ways that you can use Home Assistant and home automation to control your climate. And I'll make a video on it. So for this particular automation, we're going to create two additional helpers, uh, one for an upper range and one for a lower range of where you want that median temperature to really be. Uh, and so you would probably want like a five or so degree to prevent overworking of the HVAC system. All right, so back in Home Assistant, we will create a helper and it's going to be a number helper and we'll call this one um, HVAC upper range. Uh, we'll leave those the same. Input value for display, step size one, unit of measurement, create. And we're going to do the same thing for the lower range. So before we create the automation, we need to figure out what your thermostat's uh, temperature value is. Uh, and we're going to use that value to determine whether or not we should raise or lower that temperature. So the way we can do that is we're going to go into settings, 
devices and services. We're going to find whatever integration for your thermostat, which mine is a Google Nest. Click on the device, and here in sensors, you should see humidity and a, and a temperature. Click on the temperature, click on the little cog here, and we're going to copy the sensor ID. We're going to store it for later. We're going to create a new automation that's going to be based on the current temperature being above or below where we want it to be, and we're going to adjust accordingly. So we're going to add a trigger, and the trigger is the, is the way the automation is actually ran. So Home Assistant is constantly checking, and whenever the trigger is true, it's going to run the automation. So we're going to first add a trigger based on an entity. Click on Numeric State, and we're going to put in our median temperature here. So if it is above our upper limit, or upper range, or if it is below our lower range. And I'm going to put in down here in the four, so this, this indicates how long this trigger should be true before it actually runs the actions of an automation. I'm going to put five in here just so that we have, you know, some leeway in case the temperature changes and goes back into range or whatnot. So now that we have our trigger, we're gonna add uh, an action. So we're gonna use the add build block and then use choose the choose button. And this is going to allow us to have like a, a conditional. So we're going to enter in some conditions and what actions to perform under those conditions. So our conditions are going to be, is the median temperature above the, the target? And if it is, we're going to bring it down. If it's below the target, we're going to bring that temperature up. So under here, under the first condition, we're going to do basically the same thing. Uh, entity numeric state. Entity is going to be the median temperature. And we're only gonna set the lower this time, upper range. And then so the actions are actually gonna be what's gonna be being performed. So we're gonna perform action as the action. And we're gonna set target temperature. We're gonna choose our entity as a thermostat. And because we're using a template in this, we're gonna to have to go into menu and edit in YAML. Don't worry, it's not scary. Or maybe it is scary. I don't know. I'll make sure to include everything. So we're going to put in our our temperature, and we're going to use this template. Like I said, this is going to be in the show notes and in the description and everything. Don't worry. And then we're going to do the exact same thing for the lower range. We're going to hit save, uh, and then we're going to just call it climate control using the median temperature, and boom, there we go. We have an automation, and this is going to, where it'll run whenever your target temperature is above or below, so you're good to go. Okay, for the second thing, we're going to use the humidity sensor to control the bathroom exhaust fan. So if you're taking a shower and it gets really steamy and really humid, we're gonna turn on the exhaust fan because you don't want, you know, you don't want moisture in your bathroom because that causes mold and we don't need mold. <laughs> so this one does require you to already have either uh, an exhaust fan that's on like a smart switch or controllable by your uh, home automation system. I don't have either, but I do plan on adding it to all of my bathrooms, uh, or at least the two bathrooms that have showers in them uh, in a future video. So that's gonna be a fun thing. But for now, I'm going to use it to turn off this light back here, because that's gonna be way more fun. <laughs> and it's visual, we don't have to go in my bathroom. Uh, but first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create another helper that's going to set that target humidity. Now, if you have multiple bathrooms that you're going to be doing this in, you're going to want to have a, a helper for each of them. But today, we're just going to create one. We're going to go into settings, and then we're going to go into devices and services. We're going to go on helpers, create helper, and we're going to do just like what we did before with the, with the ranges. We're going to create a number, target humidity, input field, unit of measurement is going to be a percent sign.
So setting this value is probably going to take a little bit of trial and error in real life. You can click on the sensor itself to see your devices. So we go into settings and we're going to look at Behozy. You can see like this chart for the last like 12 hours and see, and you can kind of start seeing where your spikes are whenever you shower or whatnot. So that you know when to turn this on and off. Okay, so now we're going to create the automation itself. So we're going to go to Automations and Scenes, Create Automation, Create New Automation. Okay, so let's create our trigger. We're going to do the same thing that we did before, Empty, Numeric State, and we're going to do Humidity, uh, the HeyOZ Humidity Sensor. And we're going to do the lower limit if it's above Target Humidity. And for the lower limit, we're also going to do below target humidity. And we're gonna set this one to a little bit less. We're gonna do maybe one minute of being in this state. Same thing as we did before, going to choose on, on the first condition. We're gonna do the exact same thing, numeric state. Uh, Hazy temperature humidity. And this one is above the target humidity we're going to turn on. So because this is a light, it's going to be a little bit different. Uh, we're going to turn this light off. And then we'll add another option for entity and numeric state for the below. And in this, we're going to turn on our light. And again, this is going to be, you would just change this to turn on or off. We're going to save. So because I don't actually, we're not actually taking a shower and we're not going to wait for the, <laughs> the humidity to raise or lower. We're just going to go ahead and run the actions. And there it goes. How cool is that? You can just have it turn on or off. And that's it. So that's two ways that you can use uh, your temperature and humidity sensors in your home automation system. These were super simple examples. We can go into more detail if you guys really want to. So just leave a comment, etc., etc. All the things YouTube is supposed to want you to do for the uh, algorithm. And that's the end of the video for today. Please like, subscribe, and turn on notifications if you want to learn more about home automation, explore new products with me, and see how I am transforming my home into an automated paradise. Thanks for watching.